What's up everybody? This is Pac-Man1987. If you're on YouTube, welcome to my channel, Crash to Desktop. I'm going to play some Kerbal Space Program today. Um, we got the anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing coming up, and I thought this was a good time to go back to something I haven't done in a while. Uh, it was like two or three years ago, I did a... I called it an engineering and maneuver accurate replica of the Apollo 11. Um, what does that mean? Uh, what it was is that I had too long, you know, too long didn't read, uh, took a deep dive into researching and learning about the Apollo spacecraft, the Saturn V launch vehicle, um, ended up teaching myself um, and getting some help learning some math involved in some aerospace engineering and some orbital mechanics and learned a whole bunch about it and decided I wanted to replicate it as close as I could, um, getting a lot of the specs the same. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Created a save here for that. Now, obviously, Kerbal Space Program, the planets, the solar system, all of it is not to scale uh, with the real Earth and the real moon. So things don't need to be as big or as powerful as they are in real life. Um, so this is going to be a scale model, size-wise and mass-wise. But things like the thrust-to-weight ratios on all the stages are going to be the same. Um, the launch vehicle, the ascent to orbit, um, each stage is going to contribute as close to the amount of the trip to orbit as the real vehicle would have as possible. Um, there's going to be a few differences there, a few differences in a few places, thrust-to-weight ratio-wise, just because some things don't work in Kerbal the way they do in real life or don't work as well because of the scale. Um, and I'll explain that when we get to it. Um, so like thrust weight ratios, delta V values. Um, once it gets to flying it, I'm gonna do as many of the maneuvers the way they would have as possible. Um, again, not all of that's going to be perfect because there are some things that just don't work at Kerbal, at least stock Kerbal. And uh, I'm also gonna do the entire thing with RCS. There's gonna be no reaction wheels involved, so that's fun. Um, definitely makes it a little more interesting to fly in a few places. But uh, let's get to it. Like I said, I've done this before, so I already have a lot of the information that I need. Um, and I remember a lot of what needs to be done. But a lot of the parts that we have today didn't exist back then. Like this bad boy right here. Didn't exist. I had to do this entirely with uh, some different things. And those vehicles don't even work anymore, as far as I can tell. Because they're so old. Uh, so we're going to design just a whole new thing, uh, which will be fun because I never did do a video of the actual build. I did a video of the flight, but I didn't do the build. Um, and we are actually going to start there. We're going to start with the uh, lunar, the lunar module. So we're going to start with this, obviously, as our core. This is pretty awesome. They really did uh, design something cool with this. So let me show you how to slap this together, kind of basic configuration-wise. So you've got your lunar, lunar excursion module. You're going to need an engine. Now this thing's a little glitchy. It doesn't, uh, there's an attach point down here. This is a, a key feature. It doesn't work right, because there's two attach points. There's one there for staging, and then there's one for the engine. And as you can see, it does not like to cooperate. That was luck. So you can do that two ways. You can do what I just did, you get it to where it's trying to attach to the bottom attach point, and then you get it flicking and hope that you win. Or, you can do it the easy way. Stick anything to that. Grab the engine. It's This engine is, uh, the spark is the one that it's designed for. Voila, pops right in, no problems at all. I'm gonna do it with a bare mount, just for looks. So there you go. Uh, we have a vehicle with an engine. Now we need the coupler. This uses a Clampatron Jr. Uh, it's sized perfectly for it. Already has its RCS built in, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see here. What else do we got? And this is all going to be stock parts. I'm not using any mod parts on this. Um, I am going to use like Kerbal Engineer and whatnot just because I like to. But they've given us so much of what Kerbal Engineer shows you as stock features now that you don't even have to do that. And I may stop using it. We'll see. Uh, we got to find the right size decoupler. It's not that one. You'll notice, too, no matter what you put down here, the 
interstage fairing is sized specifically for something else. Uh, I believe this is the one we want. Now we're going to have the same problem, but with it trying to stick to the bottom of that engine. So you can see that's not what we want. That's what we want. And the engine fits in there just nice. Uh, so that's our decoupler. We want the single direction one. There's no need for the two direction one because, again, this is going to decouple and launch. So, um, And the fuel tank it uses. Again, this was the way they launched this, the way they added these parts. They're kind of designed to stick together. So it uses the FLTX220 fuel tank. It's more than sufficient. And then I typically use the where'd you go? The Terrier engine on this. Just because it looks good. You could use the spark. It has the thrust, I believe. Let me see. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, it would work. But this looks a little bit better to me. You do that and then you put it in bear mode. Looks a lot better. The descent engine was kind of big. Um, and that's kind of the basic propulsion configuration for this vehicle. And that is, that's totally enough to get, get to the moon, well, land on the moon, and then take off from the moon. Uh, the way that we're going to do it. But we need to add a few more parts. Um, some things that we need. I'm actually going to stick the landing, uh, the ladder on here first. I like to use the big one. And I want to stick it not to the fuel tank, but to the separator, although we may need to test that because it might explode. So we will see. But if we stick it on here and we try to move it up, it gets reasonably high, but it could be better. If we stick it on the separator, we get a little more uh, leeway. And this one's great because it kind of simulates the porch. The lunar excursion module had a little porch down there that they would step out onto. And then they would use the ladder on the landing lane to actually get down to the surface. And it was kind of more of a hop down to the surface, really. Let's extend this bad boy. So that gives us a little better room. Um, it could stand to be to be not that. It could stand to be moved out a bit. So it actually functions as a porch. But I think that's about as good as we're going to get out of it. Um, let's throw the leg on it and then we can judge how we're doing. I'm just going to use the mid, mid size landing struts and I'm going to do symmetry four way and I'm going to attach it over here otherwise this thing kind of gets in the way and causes some weirdness. So there we go, landing legs. Let's extend that. That's uh, just about perfect actually. About as perfect as it's going to get. think. So let's check our staging real quick. Always good to check your staging. Because we're going to stick this on the pad and give it like a quick test just to check that. I want to make sure everything works normally. Seriously though, the first time I did this, I didn't have these nice parts. I had to make do with the original stock parts and we also didn't have clipping yet. That's how long ago this was. Those little tools that I was just using to do all of that didn't exist yet. So you couldn't translate, you couldn't rotate anyways other than the very basic user uh, interface elements. And uh, I had to use, there were some shenanigans you could get up to with the donut tanks where you could stack them inside of vehicles on top of each other to stuff things through uh, and get a lot of fuel mass into a space that otherwise couldn't contain it, which I used to make the vehicle look a little more accurate. But we don't have to do that anymore. It's pretty great. 
Uh, so let's uh, extend this bad boy. Just make sure it's good. Yep, that's pretty solid. Should just clip right through ground and allow the Kerbals to get in and out. We can test that. Right, let go of that. It'll be finicky by the looks of it. But pfft. all right, we may need to work on that a bit. He's he's having some technical difficulties here. Do some more testing here. See that works great. I love how he like moves the whole vehicle just trying to walk around on it. Alright, so further design might be in order. I mean, technically speaking, the Kerbals can just jump off of it on the moon. Doesn't really quite work here, but, you know, we could just do that. Leave it that way for looks. Um, let's see, I might be able to come up with something else. We could like put another part in there or something to jack it up a little bit higher. So far so good though. Let's get back in real quick. Some weirdness going on with the Kerbal portraits now. They're like see-through. I don't know what that's about. Um, let's disable this. And test just to make sure things don't explode. Good talk. Is, is thrust even being applied? Sure doesn't look that way. Excellent. I think that worked well. Uh, on the moon, that should be fine. We can test that later. I don't think it's going to cause any explosions, though. It didn't look like it. The ladder didn't actually explode until we exploded the whole vehicle. So, I'm going to say that's good. So, that's kind of the basic construction here. I'd like to, like I said, I'd like to fiddle with this a little bit more. But it's... I don't want to go any higher. I have a 3D mouse so I can maneuver the camera inside of things. Although it's a bit finicky. See, I don't think... I don't think there's any good way to do that. Unfortunately. So they may be hopping off on the moon. Just for the sake of easiness. And then climbing back up, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Okay. We're going to leave that the way it was. Double check that it's still functioning correctly. It looks great. Looks like they've added some new features in there, too. That's pretty cool. All right, so basic construction out of the way. Uh, I mean, there's a few other things we could do to this. There's some fuel adjustment. Uh, like I said... We're going to match a few things. Now, um, I had to design this. You, you have to design this thing to work in Kerbal, which it's pretty close to in stock format. This is more than enough to get you onto the surface of the moon and back and rendezvous with something. Um, but we want to match thrust to weight ratios. And you can see they're pretty big right here. This stock vehicle is actually pretty powerful for landing. Um, you could do a bunch of different techniques with it. But... We want to match the real thing. 
So I'll use this as a, a way to do an example. Um, I've got some information over here on my other screen. So how do I? How do you get to cal calculate the thrust to weight ratio? Obviously, uh, we can see it here, down here in the Kerbal interface. Um, we've got some stuff right there. Um, up here in Kerbal Engineer, we can see it too. Um, it's showing it right now relative to the moon. We'll do calculations relative to um, sea level on Earth. So, how do we figure that out? What should it be? Well, first, double check that your staging is right, so it's telling you the right information. And then, I'll show you how to do that. So, get a calculator. Um, the formula to find a thrust to weight ratio is super simple. It is the force in kilonewtons that your rocket engine puts out divided by um, the mass of the vehicle times uh, gravity at sea level or whatever altitude you're at. But you know, usually that's going to be sea level. This is most useful for like launches, but you can figure stuff out in orbit too. There's not a whole lot of variance there. So the lunar module weighed about... 15-ish metric tons, fully fueled, ready to land, more or less, um, close to that. And it put out about 43.9 kilonewtons of thrust uh, from the descent engine. So this is for descent only, as an example. So we would do uh, 43.9 divided by, throw parentheses in there, and it would be 15, it's actually 15.059-ish tons times force of gravity at sea level, which is 9 point, um, 9.807, more or less. On Earth, it's actually a little bit different, but this is Kerbal. It's pretty close, so it'll work. So that's a 0 0.2972, etc., 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 thrust to weight ratio at sea level on Earth, which is just a, a useful reference point calculating these things um, so we can just set it to that we've got it in Kerbin because Kerbin has the same gravity so easy to do take our thrust limiter we crank it down um, I'm gonna round it to 0.3 close enough now if we switch back to the moon it's a respectable thrust to weight ratio. It's 1.82. It's not high. I usually like to do my landers with like a 3 thrust to weight ratio just for ease of uh, control or higher depending on my mood. But uh, it's doable. It's just tricky. And we can do the same thing with the second stage, but we're going to need to do adjustment anyway on the fuel. And there's a few more things we need to add. Um, so we're going to work with that. Um, back to my specs for this. So, like I said, I've done this before, so I kind of know what I need to hit numbers-wise. Um, I have a handy-dandy tool here. This is RCS Build Aid. It's a mod that's been around for a while. It lets you get kind of a graphical uh, interface to show you what your RCS thrusters are doing. Are they applying torque? And it lets you see the delta V. Uh, how much delta V your RCS thrusters have total, which can be very small. I mean, this is actually a lot as far as RCS thrusters are concerned. Um, but I believe I'm shooting for about 78. I had that on my original vehicle. Um, I think that's a pretty large safety margin, so it may not be necessary, but safety margins are good, and it shouldn't really impact anything too much. We can get that pretty easily. Um, we just throw a couple of monoprop tanks on it. Probably throw them up here, just to centralize mass more. Let's see real quick. I want the little ones. We don't even need that much. If we even need that much. What I'm gonna do, um, since these bits are actually fairly symmetrical, can we get it to sort of anyway <laughs> um, and we want it to be center line just for 
mass centralization. Um, look, that bumped us up quite a bit. We could actually knock a lot off of that. I mean, that's probably more than sufficient. We could play with it from there. Mess with it. We already have uh, 30 units on board. We have 150 units of battery. The um, Lunar Lander ran on batteries, so that's good there. And honestly, that 150 units of battery should be quite sufficient, I think, for the whole thing, because it really doesn't use a lot of power since we're not using reaction wheels. So let's see what we got here. Um, we can offset these and just hide them inside the vehicle. It's a pretty handy trick. And we can play with those. They don't have... You can see they... See, this is a handy thing. Uh, we've got a torque value here. That shows you how much torque they're applying. Now, it's not a bad thing on this vehicle because the RCS thrusters are pretty much mostly going to be used by this vehicle for... Um, doing rotational maneuvers during the landing and the takeoff. So a little torque isn't a bad thing, control-wise. Um, so that, that, these are so tiny, they don't really affect it much. And we are shooting for... My original vehicle had about 1,056 meters per second of delta V. Um, so this is a little off. And it had about 889 on the second stage. So we're definitely good there. Um, we can actually reduce the mass on the second stage because of that. That should be pretty good. It's a little bit off. But I don't think it'll cause problems. And that's the minimum amount we can change it anyway. This one, on the other hand, won't have as much. Technically, we have these little tiny ones now. We could stick one of these things in there somewhere. Or two of these things in there somewhere. Or even like do a donut on the bottom and put the engine on that. But that would probably be even more than we really need. I mean, look at that. That's way more than we need. We don't need that much. But if we find in testing that we do, we can do that. And we can make that work. So let's do it the way it's set up right now. We're shooting for... I believe I said a 0.3 thrust to weight ratio and curb and sea level and uh, I you know we can we could turn that up if we want so like if we go back to moon setting it's 1.78 that's pretty good I think we'll leave that that way um, this one obviously if you don't have a way to pan into these things, which you could probably set up a controller to do that actually if you wanted to. It's a pretty useful feature, being able to pan the camera through things. Um, but without that, you just need to take it off real quick. Modify this. Um, this one we are shooting for... Uh, let me see. I think I wrote it down wrong. I did it for... When I wrote it down, I did it as if we were on the moon, so we'll go off of that. And that one had a 1.9 thrust to weight ratio. Some more about that. Now I may have uprated that. Um, we could run the math real quick on that actually. Let's do it. <clears throat> so the ascent stage uh, weighed 4.818 tons at takeoff and it put out 15 and some change kilonewtons. It's 15 and a half ish. So we'll go 15 point, uh, we'll do like five, five, seven, around. And we're gonna divide, throw that in there. And I think I said it weighed 4.818 tons. And uh, we're gonna do it from nine point, um, nine point eight is seven. It's a 0.32 thrust to weight ratio. Not much difference. That's curb and sea level again. Whoa. Throw it back at curbin. Oh, hey, look. It's already there. So we're good to go there. Those are accurate thrust to weight ratios. 
which may or may not be need to be adjusted to actually do this because again like i said not everything that works in the real world works in kerbal space program because of the scale uh, involved everything's smaller but has the same gravity and that causes some silliness but this is a good baseline so there we go we got a lunar excursion module i don't think i'm forgetting anything this thing's pretty basic it ought to be able to do what we want um yeah i'd say that's pretty good let's turn this off if uh, testing reveals that we need more we can add more we're going to call this the lunar excursion module we're going to have a saved version of it separate from everything else and then we can part these out later So now we need a command and service module, which is a little bit trickier to design because you have to consider this vehicle in the design of the command and service module since it needs to truck it around a bit. That's the part of the Apollo spacecraft that had the crew capsule and the fuel and all the oxygen and all that jazz. Um, so let's do that. And again, these have changed a lot. so. These parts are very different from what they were when I did this last time. Um, we're going to disable reaction wheels. RCS is enabled. We can actually toggle that on and off because we don't want to use that first, but we're going to leave it. I think we want to leave it. Let's see real quick. I'm going to do an action group. Uh, da -da 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 -da. pretty sure that does what we want but let's stick some kerbals in it on the pad and make sure so that um, no we don't want that custom group one we'll make group one toggle toggle the thrust disable reaction wheels and just to be safe no wheel authority whatsoever um, it has its own units and monoprop Normally I would turn that off, but this is just testing. Let's stick it on a pad. I don't know, we might be able to just control that in flight. Yeah, that's just a toggle in flight. All right, so nothing there. Okay, cool. We have, uh, Thrust authority. Excellent. Um, last time I did this, uh, and I'll show you this just in case you ever want to use it. It's a handy trick. We didn't have pods with RCS built into them, so I had to come up with some solutions. And the solution that I came up with was using these little guys. And what you do is you stick three of them. And again, this could be handy on a vehicle that doesn't have built-in reaction. I don't know if anything is like that anymore, honestly. But you stack three of them there. Okay. And then you, you take one of them. And then you don't do that. Do rotate. We may want to zoom in and look at this. We may even need to uh, like move it out a bit. But the gist of it is, you do opposed, rotated, and a three block there with one facing out. And that gives you the ability to rotate the vehicle both ways, or pitch it, or yacht rather, both ways. And then you can do another one just down here on both sides. Because these are off center of mass, uh, the center of mass is much higher up on the vehicle. This allows you to pitch, yaw, and rotate the vehicle. You have complete control authority on a vehicle like this. So, very easy to do. That was what I did originally. Don't have to anymore, because they're just built in. How awesome is that? Back in my day, Kerbal Space Program has come a long way, and it's awesome. All right, so we got a pod. Uh, starts, wheels are off. RCS is disabled. 
we turn off the monoprop tank by default that way none of the other vehicle parts can draw it I don't think they should but you never can be too careful with these things um, let's start building <clears throat> again we use a clampatron jr so that's sufficient and looks good too now this is one thing that annoys me I don't have any way to add a parachute and a clampatron. It's a part that's been missing forever. I know there's mod parts that do it, but it's a stock part that we should have. Like, we should totally have the, the real Apollo vehicle. There's a cone up here, and this, I'll show you what it looks like if you haven't ever really paid close attention to it. Uh, it looks exactly like this. And literally like this, like I thought this thing was going to be what I'm talking about at first, but it isn't. So it, the cone extends up further. It's not quite as long as that in real life, but that gives you the gist of it. And then, oh, lo and behold, there you go. You got that. And these shrouds would be on here, and this is how it would fly until you get to the very end of the mission, and then the, the covers blow off, and the parachutes are in there. That's how the re real vehicle is built. There's actually the parachute cluster is in these little compartments like this. Um and they deploy from that at the very end and the um, access hatchway is like a little tunnel that moves through the middle of that there's no part like that in Kerbal Space Program, not stock anyway at least nothing I've found um, and then I think the one time I found a modded part that did it, it didn't even work right which was disappointing all we have are these which are obviously problematic because they prevent you from docking so here's one place where it won't look quite right. We're gonna have to put the parachutes on the side. Which is fine. That's yeah, it's okay. Um it's just kind of annoying. And it looks silly, in my opinion, but what can you do? I'm gonna do it like this. Because I don't wanna do symmetry. Here's a fun trick. If you ever want a part to be the same, but you don't want to use symmetry, stick it on there. Make sure you're in snap. Go to the offset part tool, pull it up, click one of the handles. Boom. Now, a lot of times you'll get what I just got, where it, it like moves inside of stuff. It's not very useful, so that's not quite what I wanted. Let's see if we can get it to do something else. It can, it can really vary depending on where you've put it. There you go. It's a little better. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So those are pretty much perfectly laid out now. Um, I don't think that's going to affect the center mass too much. It's ever so slightly off center. We can work with that. We'll be able to fix that. Um, we can put a, a drogue on there too. Now we're not gonna have three parachutes. We're only gonna have two because I don't feel like sticking three on here But the drogue we could do that one We just can't do it here on the hatch. I mean we could they don't really have to come out of the hatch How much does that weigh? 0.075 tons versus 0.1 it's Pretty close. I Just think that looks stupid, so we're not gonna do it it's gonna be aesthetically pleasing. Could like stick the drogue in there, that could be fun. But it might get in the way of things. So we'll do that instead. <clears throat> We've got like a little parachute cluster, it should be sufficient. Uh, the other obviously essential thing is our heat shield, which, where the heck did they move those to now? I'm always forgetting. Thermal. There we go. Not you. Not you. You. There we go. Have ourselves a heat shield. That's pretty good. We probably don't even need that much. Um, did I write that down, actually? We may not need much at all. <clears throat> I think I only had 18 units of monoprop. Which is way more than we would ever need, honestly. Probably do half. It'd be sufficient. 
So that's cool. So that's a pretty basic pod. Um, so what else do we want to design for that? Well, we need to have a separator. And then there's a fun, fun trick I want to show you to do something really cool. This one probably went the two-way, in my opinion. I hate how long that is. Kind of goofy, but it'll work. Okay, so we have our separator. I never can tell if these mean crossfeed is enabled or disabled. Let's figure that out real quick. I believe there is a Monoprop engine around here somewhere? Let me see. Yes, okay. So that's 32. Uh, that's 735 meters per second delta V in this configuration. What happens if we... Has seemingly no effect. So that's fine. We'll just leave it default. <coughs> Oh, while we're building it, let's make sure we keep our staging clean all the way up. All right, so there's your separator, you got your heat shield. Here's a fun trick. The real command and service module on launch had a shroud. It was an aerodynamic shroud. It protected it, provided a little aerodynamics, um, which was completely over top of it. And then that would separate away um, once they got to a certain altitude no longer needed the launch escape system. It would separate with the launch escape tower. It actually pulled it away from the vehicle as it went. Which, this is doable. We can actually do this, and I will show you how. Using this one weird trick. Um, we need the smallest aerodynamic shell. Why am I putting it up here? That seems stupid, doesn't it? No. Stick it upside down. I gotta make it happy. Which means you have to play with it a bit. <clears throat> Looks like it's happy there. the narrowest we can make this. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be cool. So we're going to put a shroud on it, because I want to. And the shroud is going to be, you know what, we'll attach it like this. It's kind of cool, right? Should come right off. Um, yeah, that looks cool, sort of. Got a little bit of a jagged edge. It's edgy. Um, it's, it can be two because this isn't really what this is for and I'll show you why so it's on there simply to be cool looking it's, it's only purpose and um, we're actually gonna disable staging because we don't even want this to dis to do staging um, which where did that go uh, we might not actually be able to do staging disable on this one but that's fine um, I swear there's a way to do that. Could be wrong though. Oh, there it is. Fairing staged. Not staged. So, it's not even going to be in the staging stack. And then we're going to put our launch escape tower on there, which I believe is under utility. Boom. Launch escape tower. Cool. Great. Grant. Why are we doing it this way? I will show you. So we go over to our actions.
go to abort because we're going to have an escape tower. We're going to um, activate engine, obviously. But then here's the fun trick. Uh, we click the decoupler and decouple node. So our abort sequence, oh, wait a minute. I take that back, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't want to do that. Um, this is an abort sequence. So we would want to do that, decouple this. This will separate the pod and fire the escape system. And then we need, we'll make action group custom one, will be activate engine and decouple node on the docking port. So let me demonstrate how that works. <clears throat> Which we can do right here, right now. All right, so say we want to abort. Oh God, it's all going terribly wrong. Anytime now, parachutes. Well, they died. <laughs> but you see how that's supposed to work there. Uh, let's, why? Why were you not working? That doesn't make any sense. Let's, uh, let's check this. Immediate, maybe. We'll have to change that later on. We can make an action group for that too. In fact, we'll add it to the uh, discard action group for the thing since we won't need it to be like that anymore. But all right, here's immediate. So let's say we abort. Oh no, it's going terribly wrong, abort. While stowed. Cannot deploy while stowed. What does that mean? I've never seen that. How many Kerbals have to die, Kerbal Space Program? Let's go to Vehicle Assembly and check on that. While stowed. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. While, while stowed. Why you do this? Oh, hey, cool. I didn't know you could do that. Um, yes? No? This must be some new feature I'm unaware of. We're going to figure it out. Okay. Let me click it. Let me click it. Oh god, what? They all died. Um Let's revert to launch. So we'll test the um the discard. Because again, if you go up, you need to get rid of the tower. Oh look at that, it's gone now. Um Hey. Why? While stood. I do not understand. So confused. We're gonna need to figure that one out though, that's kind of important. Now, I'll figure that out on my own time, because it's clearly something I'm not aware of. It's been like a couple months now since I played Kerbal last. But you get the gist. I will fix that later. Anyway, that's how you do a cool little launch escape shroud and tower. And again, that is 
the abort action group decouples your separator and activates the engine. The discard group decouples the node and activates because you may be discarding it when you no longer need it. And that's just this little coupler up here that it's attached to. So that's fun. Um, let's see what else we need. Well, we need a command and service module. That's cool. Let's um, let's leave this bad boy off for the moment because we're gonna need to do some work on this and it needs to be gone. So that's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky compared to the last time I did this. So we are shooting for on its own should be about a thousand and sixty-five delta V, but if we stick a lunar excursion module on top of it, it should be around like 500, 450 to 600. So, and then there's a few things we're gonna need. Um, it has batteries, which is great. We don't need a few other things. So we have a few options. That's gonna depend very heavily on me finding the right fuel tank. They keep moving around, and I never remember where they are now. Where you at? Where'd you go? No. Those are big ones. Why am I at a complete loss? They're down here. That's right. Okay. So we could do like that. Or even that, maybe. Um, let's throw that on there and just see how we're doing. I believe... I believe this is the one... Is it that one? No. That guy. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. That's pretty rad. Um, so that, I mean, that would be the Delta V right there. It's not really as long as the real thing, though. The real thing was quite a bit longer than that. Um, let's save this real quick, because we need to make a version of the Lunar Lander that we can stick on top. <clears throat> Where are you at? Yes, over here. Subassembly. Uh, we'll change this real quick. Needed. Uh, we need to lower the amount of fuel. Yeah, it'd be right, right about where we want it. There. Um, if we stick a mem on top of here, yeah, that's more than we need, but that's a fine thing. Not necessarily bad. Um, but here's where this gets annoying. So again. This isn't really the same size. Now, does that matter that much? Not really, but we could play with it some more. Let's see what else we can do with it. Um, I feel like a service bay in there. Nah, nah, that's actually a little more accurate to the real deal. But here's where that gets tricky. Let's throw our lunar excursion module on top as if we are in docked configuration. Um, oh wait, let's adjust accordingly. So open this bad boy up. Well, why do we have a service bay that, you know, what, what are we doing with this? Well, there's a few things we can do. Are there any more useful versions of that? I don't think there are. No. Uh, oh hey, well, this one's actually a service module. I believe this is a part that was new. 
but it's not the right size. This one, I believe, is the right size. I don't remember if this is a stock part, though. And look how silly big that is. Like, there's... Uh, I don't think this thing works. I've never liked it. It's kind of what I'm talking about wanting. But it doesn't really do what I want. Now, this thing has some useful features. I believe you can stick fuel tanks inside of it, which is pretty cool. So that lets you stack your fuel internally. Um, but I, I think it's actually too big, in my opinion. It lets you stick some other things in, too. Like, you could put in batteries and monoprop. I feel like this would be more useful on a bigger vehicle, actually, or one that's going to do something else. I don't think it's really necessarily what we need for this. Again, it ends up making this way too big. Um, oh wait, we don't need that actually. Stick that on there. And it doesn't give us enough fuel space to boot. Although, eh, it's a lot closer, but it needs to be a, a, a smidge shorter and carry more fuel. I guess you could do like, that. What's cool is you can attach things to the top and the bottom, which is kind of useful. But it's still... Uh, that's actually right around where it needs to be. A little bit more than that. Um, you know what? Let's play with it. Um, here's what I'm interested in. So, turn the shroud off. A couple of things would need to be in here, and we're just going to throw them in there right now as kind of an example. Uh, we need a fuel cell, because it was powered by fuel cells. We could stick a battery, an extra battery in, because it was also powered by batteries, but... Just to give it more oomph. But once the fuel cell is on... That should be uh, sufficient. And the fuel cell stores charge, so it's kind of a combination. Uh, what else would we want to put in here? Well, you can stick all kinds of silly things in. Um, we would need a little more fuel, and we would need some monoprop. This is kind of annoying, in my opinion. I don't know. I just don't think the design of this was thought through. Like, what does that accomplish? It accomplishes nothing. So we just do monoprop the old-fashioned way. Oh, look at that. We got monoprop. Way bigger than we need, actually, I'm sure. Um, I think my original one had... four forty-two units, so like 160-ish... A little bit more than 160 units. Uh, we'd probably need a little more than that, actually, to accomplish the same amount. And then we could play with this. But now you can see, so then we end up, uh, not, not quite the amount of fuel we need. So then we have to add fuel. That'd be about right. In fact, that's really quite close. So here's where it gets funky. We kind of want to design this for stability when docked. Because it's going to need to do several maneuvers while docked. So we pull up our RCS build aid. We put it in translation because that's where we kind of kind of want it. It's not it's not super important. In fact, 
I'm not so worried about that. Let's uh, separate it. Let's make it perfect. You can kind of watch your torque values go down. That's pretty good. So this would be good for translation maneuvers when trying to dock. Um, and then you can see, okay, so then our center of mass ends up up there. It's a lot of torque for translation maneuvers, but we're not going to be doing any left, right, up, down, you know, X and Y axis translation maneuvers. We're going to be doing Z axis translation, which doesn't have much torque at all. That's actually pretty good. And in fact, we'll probably for that set these up so these only these are the only ones that do it. Well, it doesn't really matter. So that's that's a pretty good RCS configuration. Could we achieve the same goals with a different thing? Possibly. I guess that's not bad. I just this thing irks me. I feel like it's too long. So we know we could accomplish that. Could we accomplish it and make it look better? Uh, let's find out. I just feel like the real deal... ...is a little more like this. This causes problems though when you get into things like... Hey, I want to be able to have RCS thrusters that work properly. The game's like, why would you want that? Alright, so that gives you a ton of delta V, and I feel like it looks closer to the real deal, at least lengthwise. It's just not irking me as much. So, let's give it monoprop. Uh, fuel tanks. <clears throat> this is handy because we can do... We can do this. What about like 120 units of that right there? We can change that. That would probably be more than enough RCS fuel. And we're never going to open that. So that's another thing. Um, the other thing we need to stuff in there is the electrical. Put fuel cell in. I don't need four fuel cells. Thank you very much. This really doesn't need that much charge at all. In fact, I hate to say it, but I find fuel cells mostly useless in this game. Kind of bums me out because it's the thing I think is cool. But uh, again, we're using the translation trick to more or less get it centered. Let's let's fly in there. There we go. Centered at least. Neat. Um, so we got 120 units of monoprop. That's pretty good. Should be a monoprop delta V of about 106 ish. But that would be. when it's docked, so. Here's where we run into stupid problems. And this is why I don't like this either. Um, actually, well, that's not quite right, but uh, look at that. Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we can't attach things to this service bay, which is stupid. Um, but you know what? Come to think of it, is that really a problem now? Because we live in a day and age where you can just translate things. But it looks like you can only do it so well. It's not quite perfect. I'm being a little harsh. 
with our uh, ability to move these parts. It's kind of frustrating. There's some other tricks we could do with that, though. So I'd like it to be a little bit better. Alright, well, how do I do that? Here's a good trick. Cubic octagonal struts. This is one of my favorite tricks, actually, for positioning RCS. Because you can get away with all kinds of silliness using these little bad boys. Um, let's see. I've, I'm noticing, though, uh, since the last time I played, they're being a little bit harsher about what you can accomplish with translation. You can't quite just stick things out in the middle of nowhere now. Which is probably for the best, let's be real. But look at this. So, uh, what does that let us do? Let's just get it pretty darn close. Because why would we want it to only be centered for this? Um, we only really need it to be super stable in translation maneuvers at the very beginning of its mission after it is decoupled from the third stage and it's spinning around to pick up the lunar excursion module. After that, it's only doing rotation maneuvers, which are really easy to do. Um, that's 98.5 meters per second. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember if... I feel like... I, caught, I had to use most of it up, but... I also, I also want to say I had extra. Because again, the way that I'm going to show you how to do these maneuvers, it really doesn't take much. <clears throat> we'll have to test it. But I don't know, this, this looks better to me. It just feels off with the length that it otherwise has here. I just, it's cleaner looking, but it, I feel like it's just too long. This is too long. They made it just a sketch bigger than it should be. In my opinion. I feel like this is more useful for some other things. This looks like what I think of. And that's more or less all we need for that. Um, I mean, there's a few other things we could do. We could put some surface bays in here. Like, where'd they go? We could do one of these little cargo storage units, one of the little ones. And we could have the... Where's it at? I know they have one. At least I thought they had one. The passive seismometer. Which is kind of what they had. Although I, I kind of liked the real Apollo version of it more. There was like a experiment they stuck on the moon. It had two little solar panels at angles. And it was a seismography experiment. It's pretty neat looking. I don't know, it's just kind of one of those iconic little gadgets they brought along. But this is pretty good. Um, let's double check our delta V values. We don't even need this much as far as fuel. That's more than enough. And thrust to weight ratio wise, um, it should be 0.22 for the docked configuration. Or 0.4 for the undocked. So let's drop that guy down a bit. Like a lot like almost all the way <laughs> again we're going for looks not necessarily needing full performance because we want it to be accurate let's check our staging uh, yep cool great grand and it's a little higher than I would have expected actually but the starting value is correct so We'll go with it. Yep, that looks good. That does not. Here's where staging gets messy. 
parachutes. Okay, that's looking better. I think this is our design. Um, and we want to save two versions of this. We want to save the command and service module version. We'll override it. And we will make... Well, we don't need to make a version of it that is attachable because... This is the, the root part right here. Um, oh, you know what we need to put back on it is the part we removed earlier, which was transparently floating somewhere and is now gone. So that's not very useful. Uh, we may have to tweak a few things real quick for that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because it's not going to affect anything at all. So. Doo -doo -doo. Coupling. We want. Actually, we want payload. We want this. We're gonna test that. I think that's right. Throw the escape tower on there. Very cool, very cool. Um, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna set this not staged and we're gonna make the launch escape tower the very tippy top thing so it can't be accidentally staged. We would never want that. Save that. We're also going to save the this. Gosh, that is a really big engine. <laughs> I got a really, really, really big engine. It might actually be bigger than we need. Looks cool. Yeah, that's not right. That's not the command and service module engine we all know and love. make the stacked version of this because this is what it actually would be like in the launch vehicle. What? Oh. <laughs> we need to fix that actually real quick. There we go. That's the root part. That's the payload. I'm sorry, this is the Kapalo payload. The Kapalo. Save that. Let's throw that away real quick. So there's our launch vehicle, or I'm sorry, our command service module. Um, let's test this real quick. I want to make sure that these things still separate. What? You're not you're not gonna put crew in there for me? Okay, that's fine. I don't care.
Do we still have our abort action group? No, because I forgot to set it up. Which is fine. Um... I still don't know why it thinks these are stowed. It's really odd. Somehow all my action groups did not get done correctly. That's, that's cool. It's great. It's grand. Let's go ahead and, and redo that. Activate. Decouple node. Maybe that was why. No? Okay. That's cool. Just don't save my things. You know why? It's because it's stuck. So we do need to uh, adjust it a bit. See, it's stuck to the bottom of the command module. Even though that looks really good, the fairing is getting stuck. We want it to be stuck to this. Even though it'll have a silly jagged edge, it will work correctly then. Because this, this thing here disappears and therefore can't be stuck. Um, I'm going to try something with these two. I'm just going to visually place them. Make sure they're not like clipped or something. It's possible. I don't know why this one would be though. That doesn't make any sense. Let's try this one more time. Yay! Except the shoots still don't work. That's awesome. So good. Well, um, like I said, I'm going to fix the parachutes on my own time. But uh, I think we're good to go there. That was pretty successful. Let me pop in there one more time and I'll just show you kind of where we're going to go with it next. Didn't need to leave just yet. Let's load the CSM. Make sure this is the one that has the nice action groups. Looks pretty spiffy to me. And let's go ahead and slap a lunar excursion module under there. Cool. How about that? I'll save this bad boy. So this would be the payload. Um, this is what we're hoisting into orbit. Uh, next time because I am going to end the stream here momentarily. Next time we're going to be doing the launch vehicle, uh, which should be fun. There's going to be um, some thrust weight shenanigans, some eulage motors. Um, it's going to be good times. And then after that, we'll do some testing. 
So if you are still watching, uh, I hope you've been enjoying. I hope this has been informative. Um, if you have any comments, you know, go ahead and post those. Um, I'm expecting to do the next session of this either tomorrow or the next day. Um, and then we're going to do testing. And then I'm hoping, uh, I believe Saturday is the anniversary of the landing. I'm hoping to do the full flight that day. Um, either that day or Sunday, depending on how well this all goes. But uh, if you are still watching, I hope you've been enjoying. Have a good one.